everyone. Welcome back to the craziest hall show on the internet, Retro Game Hall, for part two of the freaking end, or end of summer, beginning of summer hall. If you haven't checked out part one, click that link in the description box, check it out. We got carts, we got mad sweaty stuff, we got repro stuff, we got things that didn't even originally have boxes, but somehow he found a way to put a box in it just because... So how we roll on this show, dude. Sweaty. We gotta think outside the box to get a box. <laughs> That's a good thing. So we're thinking inside the box to get out of the box. Yeah. But there is no box. Whoa. You know who has a box though? Who? John Bisto. So I basically only got one disc pickup for this episode of Retro Game Hall, which I think that might be a first. Really? Yeah. See, it's so sad that he's like tired just like hearing about it. So it's man. fucking. It's crazy. I mean, all night. It's, it's yeah. No. How was that workout with John Baystone? So, like I said, one disc base game for this particular hall episode, which is just terrible. So, what, what game is that? Um, this is one game. that's kind of almost an anachronism because this is a game that came way after the TV show that it's based on had it was already off the air. Like we're yeah. talking like two generations later. Okay. That would be Biker Mice from Mars for the PlayStation 2. Uh, so the Super NES game is a very expensive one. That's about a $100 cartridge right there. Um, which, I don't know if it's any good. I've never played I, it. I actually have it. It's alright. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So this one looks like it's got a lot more bells and whistles than the Super NES game where you're basically just like riding around on a bike. Like this one you can get like bar fights. There's plenty of bike riding, of course. Stunts. Um, things like that. Three playable characters. Two exciting game modes. More than 35 possible upgrades. But... It's just really weird that, like, they put out a game on a PlayStation 2, like, way later after a kid's TV show was off the air. I mean, the TV show was on the air, like, during the Super Nintendo era. Yeah. And this is not only PlayStation, this is PlayStation 2. I fucking hated that cartoon, I'll be honest with you. I just thought... The, really? The premise, like, the the mice looked like retards. Like, they were, like, all big and shit. With they're all jacked. These, like, ugly ass ears and these... I mean, they're mice. Teeth. They just look so I mean, you know what it was a cheese off of. Stupid. Ninja Turtles. Like, every, everything yeah. was... Anything where you, like, basically make a anamorph, anapomorphic, um, you know, animal. You know, whether it be a turtle or yeah. a mouse or whatever. It was Ninja Turtles. Or, like, like Cowboys and Mumesa and shit. Oh, dude, I love that. love that intro song. Like, all the stuff that was bad had the best intro songs. <laughs> Everything back, everything back in the day was so cool. Like, <laughs> mice from Mars. <laughs> like, all that shit had really good intros, man. But you know what the best was? Seriously? Which one? Dino Saucers. Oh, yeah. I love Dino Saucers. Best intro song I love song that. I love that. Ever, intro. dude. That's <laughs> like it was just fucking awesome, man. man. A good intro. That intro was better than the actual cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> like the, the, the premise of the cartoon was just fucking stupid, but yeah. So Biker Mice from Mars. Um, I would say an unusual PS2 game, but not expensive. This is like in the teens, like 15, 16 bucks for a copy of this. Yeah. Complete. I think. It is. Yeah, with the manual. So it seems like kind of a neat game, man. I'll I'll give it a go. You know, like the animation is, it's like, it looks like cell shading shit. Yeah. So, I don't know, it might be cool. Who knows? You know, play this on the air someday. Good shit. We'll see. Okay. What a Wii got. <laughs> uh, that's a good intro. So, I have three Wii games uh, that mm -hmm. I would like to show. I actually bought more Wii games this summer, but these are the only <clears> three <throat> I think it's worth showing. Okay. So, the first one, I pronounce it as Oni Chanabra. Oni Chanabra? I think it's... I wanted Chanabra, but I call it Oni Chanabra. Oni Chanabra? Bikini yeah. Zombie Slayers. Exactly. So they... There is a 360 version of this game, which I do not have. Really? Yeah, there's a there's a Xbox 360 version. Okay. And then there's a PS4 version, which I have, which I beat. Um, but there is this Wii one, which kind of sucks because you have to use, like, the... The motion controls. Exactly. Okay. I didn't know that before I bought it. I got it, and then I was trying to play it, and I was like, Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me, dude. So, I think out of all three games, it's probably the weakest one. So, What's next? Next one is Riger. This is... I did not know I this game know. existed until maybe not that long ago. I was like, they got a Riger? Because I, you know, yeah. I, have, I have it for NES, I have it for PS2, and then this one. This one actually looks pretty bad. I have mm -hmm. not played it yet, but I don't know if it's any good. Have you played it? Yes. Is it good? It's okay. You can't use the retro controller, I just noticed it. Yeah, you gotta use the freaking Wiimote and the nunchuck. 
Which sucks. sucks. Well, whatever, dude. I, I thought this was Might be good. Do you like yeah. throw the Wiimote to throw the shield? The, 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 what do they call it? The, the shield disc? Oh, I have shield armor. I couldn't use Something like that. Shield something. But Ry the disc armor. Disc armor. That's Ry what it is. Ryder looks real different than this one. He got white hair this time. Yeah. It just made him look more like... He's very tribal. Yeah, more modernized. But, I, you know, got that out the way. And then this Wii game was actually kind of expensive, but... You can rarely find this on eBay, dude. Like, yeah. I li like literally, there was only two listings for this game, and that is uh, Guilty Gear XX One Core Plus. Longest title yeah, ever. So That's some Capcom shit. There's uh, two Guilty Gear games for the Wii. One of them was like super common. I forgot what that one was called. And then, then this one. This one is about like I think this one cost me like sixty bucks, dude. Um, and then the seller, when he shipped it to me, he gave it. He, Gave me this dope like case for the protective case. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so um, I have not played it yet, and it includes a bonus disc. So nice. What's on the bonus disc? Oh, what does it say? It says soundtrack CD included. This two disc set includes the game and a special soundtrack CD. Those normally have really good soundtracks. Yeah. So super. This is cool. Again, you know, I wanted to just get this one because I see that it's really hard to find. You really don't see that many listings, so mm -hmm. I figured this one might be going up in price a little later. So I figured, get it now. Why not? Yeah, I'm just trying to get rid of all these Wii games. I have a list of Wii games. I'm not trying to go for a full set. No, there's, there's too, too many. Too it's like a thousand. Yeah, there is like too much garbage. No. So I have a list of just the ones I want, and I just want to really get a lot of these out the way. So, dude, I'll tell you what. This one. If there's some dude out there, and you know there is, that has like a complete Wii collection. Oh yeah, I've that is that. like the king of the sweat lords. That dude. is because there's a lot sweaty. of pure garbage. Dude, I don't even want to waste my space. All the stupid sports yeah. games and just nonsense on there. Yeah. God, that was so bad. Ugh. That, that's not a console I, I would collect. This full no, for. not at all. I'd rather collect for the Wii U. There's actually a lot of good games on it. Yeah, and Wii U only has like 150 games. It's very something. completable. Yeah. Like, it really is. Yeah. So. so, this is definitely among my sweatier pickups because I own this game digitally on two different consoles, on the Xbox One and on the Switch. Um, I didn't pay for the Xbox One version because it was actually free on Games with Gold one month, but I figured, oh, yeah. why not? Cool. I originally got it for the Switch, but uh, Limited Run put out Curse of the Moon, the basically the prequel, I guess, to Bloodstained, like the NES version of it uh, in a physical copy, and guys, this is an exact reproduction in dimensions to a Konami NES box, which is just, that alone That's is what made me buy this. Like, you could actually... If you wanted just the regular copy of the game, you could have gone to Best Buy to get it. Mm. Like, they actually had it. But I was like, the box alone was like, I have to have that. Like, this isn't just, yeah. you know, a freaking, it's neat to have, like, a physical copy of the game. And it is, I'm going to leave it sealed, because, again, I have two digital copies. I have no logical reason to open this. But just the fact that they took the time to make it look like a Konami silver box. You know, like my other three Konami uh, Castlevania NES games. I was just so impressed by that, and only like limited run seems to be doing this kind of shit where they put that kind of care into their package yeah. to really give you a reason to buy this. And the art is by the same artist that drew the originals. Yes. No shit. Thing. I didn't dude, know that, dude. I don't know if I said if, if oh, you've seen shit. the video, but there's um what's that channel? The they have an interview with the guy that that drew all the Konami shit. He seems like a really good guy too. His name is like uh, I think his name is John Debo. Look him up. So yeah, they got him to paint the original art, That's and he did that. Wild. So look up, look up that uh, that interview with him, John DeBoe. I think it's called like Games, Games Me, uh, whatever. And on top of that, this is actually a really good game. Yeah. Like it's a lot of people put out games that they say are like you know it's like retro style or it's like eight bit. This is one that I actually think pulls it off. Like if someone if. Somehow you could invent the concept of time traveling, and you could go back in time and give this to me and make it playable on the NES. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely believe this is an NES game. Like it has a few obvious refinements with technology and things that maybe the NES didn't get to, but like the the art palette and the graphical scale and everything like that is spot on with an 8-bit um, NES Castlevania game. So. The guys who made this, I mean, it's like, it was cool as shit that we got the new Bloodstain game, but it was like, even way cooler, it's like, holy shit, they're doing like a little prequel, side cool kind of thing, and they're doing it 8-bit. Like, I thought that, that was just fucking amazing, so, yes. And I actually want to give a very special thanks to this freaking Captain Sweat Lord over here, since I tried to get the first batch on Limited Run, and it was gone like that, and I couldn't meet the, the deadline for the second one. 
So I, so I asked him to step in for him and just pay out on the money. I was like, bro, I need you to freaking put the sweat lord skills to work. Yeah. <laughs> get, get I actually, I, I got, I was able to get the first batch. Yeah. And then I've honestly, I've just always been like, I've never missed a limited run. Really? I've never. I, every, every game I've wanted to get, I've gotten sim simple. I've never so. Well, I've only tried for one other one and I got it the yeah. uh, Night Trap on the oh, Switch. Okay. Did yeah. you hear they're doing double switch? <laughs> double switch on the Switch. <laughs> yes! Must oh have it, God. must have Corey Sega CD Sweetness, must have it. Oh my gosh. Must have it, dude. I, 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 yeah. I can't not get it. I've already got like the Super Sweat Lord Edition of Night Trap, and this is basically the same game dude, just with Corey Haim. That was one of my first Sega CD games. I gotta get that dude when they now because they put it out on PS4 like a long time oh, ago. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, God, please let them bring this to the Switch someday because they did the same thing with Night Trap. Okay. And I was like, Oh God, please let them do this. And they finally announced it when they announced it at E3 with all the other shit. They're doing. I was like, Yes, nice. God, that's like my favorite announcement. So very cool. Limited run for the fucking win. Taking care of the Sweat Lords. Speaking of Nintendo Switch, yeah, I got three uh, Switch pickups. Uh, first one, all sweaty. I will show is uh, Psycho Collection Volume Three. This one has Strikers 1945 Part Three. Nice. This has Gun Brick. Gun Barrick. Gun Gun Barrick. Gun Barrick. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what this game is called. Like, Cannon. Cannon, and then Zero Gunner Two, which is actually a pretty cool game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one's like more. Uh, These are like, indie. like you you've had um, previous volumes of this on the show before, if I remember mm -hmm. right. And they're all basically shooters, right? They're all yeah, uh, okay. except for uh, Gunbark. That one's more like Arkanoid. Okay. But it has characters from Gunbird. Oh okay. So, yeah. Gun Gun Gunbark. Gunbark. Gun and then Cannon uh, Volume Two had like the prequel to Cannon, and then. The other, you know, Volume 1 had 1945, and then Volume 2 had 1945, Part 2, and then this one has Part 3. So, you can get these on PlayAsia. And then I Great think, site. Yeah, and I think PlayAsia is actually going to come out with a copy that has all three volumes in it. Oh, I would love that, because any of them. Yeah, whereas I have, like, the three separate volumes, mm -hmm. they're going to come out with, like, a... Like a box set? Yeah, like a collection oh, of all three. I'm in, bro. So, yeah. Let's do it. So, just to let you guys know about that. Uh, this game right here is also from PlayAsia. It's called Pato Box. Mm. It's a black and white game, but it plays just like Punch Out. You're like what? A, yeah, you're like a duck. You're like this duck guy. <laughs> Pato means duck in Spanish. Oh, okay. So I think the game is like the game is. I think it's made by Mexican developers. Like it was made in Mexico. What the fuck? So they, yeah, and it's pretty cool. It looks like a comic book. It looks like a black and white comic book. And all these villains in the back, they're all like different characters, kind of like what Punch Out does. And they all have like. It's pretty cool because you, you fight in like different levels. So they're le not only do do you have to like you know avoid the the boxers' attacks, but you have to avoid like the levels. Like some levels have like electricity coming across. And you Whoa! Like God shit! And it's hard as shit. I'll tell you that. But yeah, this game is pretty cool, man. It, you know these games, these box games in PlayAsia are really cheap. So I think we still have this one for sale. So nice. Yeah, check that one out. Super cool. And oh then God. the last Wow, one, this is sweaty. Yeah, this is uh, Hollow Knight for the Switch. This nice. is uh, a, what is it, Fan Gamer um, exclusive, physical exclusive one. So, yeah? Yeah, you got it at Fangamer.com. So that's like a, is that like a limited runnish type of site? Yeah, okay. pretty much. Yeah, it, it's a, Fan Gamer, it's, it's not, they don't just sell games, they sell like merch. Like, okay. Uh, pins and t-shirts and all that but some, every once in a while they sell games and then I guess they had the rights to develop the Hollow Knight limited edition one so I got that man I, I, I've never even played Hollow, uh, Hollow Knight until I got this because everybody said the game is really good mm -hmm. it's like a Metroidvania game I've heard but it, it's actually pretty cool it's pretty decent so I'm glad I got this comes with the, I don't even know dude it comes with so much shit I don't even want to take it out show them the inside of it you sure? yeah just like give them a close up so just they can see the little figure yeah that's actually really neat Little you know, freaking dude, with yeah. his little horns. So that's cool, man. That's it. It's my Hollow Knight. Biggest. So the next pickup was supposed to be a stereo pickup, but my good friend over here actually happened to forget his extra sweaty special edition copy. I forgot to bring it. Yes, it's okay. We'll cut into pictures so you guys can see what it looks like. But that would be uh, Bloodstain Ritual of the Night, um, game by Koji Igarashi, who's kind of the father of like. Not Metroidvania, but like Castlevania Metroidvania. Mm -hmm. um, guy made Symphony of the Night, um, some of the Game Boy Advance games. Like he's definitely one of the most prolific uh, developers and artists to 
you know, lend his creative pen to the Castlevania series. So while this isn't technically a Castlevania game, it's not made by Konami, it's, if you like Castlevania, you'll probably like this. It's definitely in the same kind of wheelhouse of it. Yeah. Um, so the Kickstarter was like four or five years ago. Yeah. And it's, wow. I mean, it just kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And that's probably half the reason they put out Curse of the Moon was to like chill find the fuckers out. You know, it's just like, God, when is this damn thing going to be finished? You know, it was fully funded and everything. This is, I would, I would say probably the most high profile Kickstarter video game ever. Yeah. With, I with think it was like one of the first, right? I mean, it was, it was about the same time as Money Number no. 9. Oh, and that, that came out like three years ago. So, but look how well that went, right? Yeah, it was the So, um, I've only played it a little bit. I actually burned through the first level. Um, he's played it for a little bit himself, mm -hmm. too. Um, my personal thoughts, it's, it's definitely in the wheelhouse of Castlevania, in my opinion. Like, it's got the same kind of flavor um, as the, you know, we'll say sort of the 16-bit, maybe the PlayStation era mm -hmm. of, of Castlevania games. Um, the art style is very Japanese, as is the dialogue. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Koji Garashi, I don't even think he speaks English, so at least not very well. <laughs> so, I um, mean, you know, it kind of makes sense. You know, it's made by a Japanese guy that's going to have Japanese sensibilities. So, if that kind of thing puts you off, this may not be for you. It doesn't really bother me, but it's definitely very Eastern. Like, the way the dialogue flows and everything, where they you pick up an item and it tells you, like, all this unimportant shit that you just don't really need to know. Um, but it's very action-y, like you get different weapons and everything, like, you know, a whip, a sword, you know, you can use your feet, do kind of like combo kicks and shit like that, there's big, you know, epic Castlevania-style boss battles, um, it's open so you can, you know, much like Symphony of the Night, you can kind of go back and forth at your leisure to pick things up, it does have save points, obviously. Um, it says on the back, I, I'm, I'm assuming, we were talking about this earlier, that this is going to be like DLC at some point. It says uh, Xbox Multiplayer 2, Xbox Co-op Multiplayer 2, Xbox Live Multiplayer 2, and Xbox Live Co-op Multiplayer 2. So basically what that means is, um, if not now, at some point, it will be um, local and online co-op. So you'll be able to do couch co-op and online co-op. That's more or less what that means. Just kind of overstating the obvious. I'm a little disappointed that they didn't have that at launch <laughs> because I had not heard about, I don't know if you guys can see this, probably, there it is, so you can see that I'm not full of shit, it's all listed right there. I had never heard about any of this, like during the entire development of the game, did you? No. Nah. Like any indication they're going to be doing co-op or anything? Like I, this is, when I got the game, that was the first time I was like, what? When I looked at the back of this shit, I thought... Maybe you should have talked about that. That would have been a pretty big selling point, in my opinion. Like, hey guys, by the way, it's co-op. I would have been like, what? Like, holy shit. That definitely would have moved this up in my estimation. But um, they were having some trouble when the game was released uh, for Switch and Xbox One. Apparently there's some game-breaking uh, bugs in it I talked oh, about yeah. on the RGL Facebook page. If you haven't visited that, click that link down there. Um, so I kind of put off getting it. This came out a couple weeks ago, and I figured, why go and pick it up? You know, when I'm waiting for the patch to fix it, because apparently, like, some of the items that you needed to get in the chests, you couldn't get. <laughs> like, the chest would already be open, which would basically break the game. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that's not going to work. So I just picked it up the other day. You know, just today was the first uh, time I had to play it. But um, anyways, I'm going on here. What's your, your thoughts about it? Like, you, you played a little bit? Like, what do you think? Did, did it, was, <laughs> was it worth the wait? Um... To be honest with you, man, like, I guess, like, you know, okay, here's the thing with me. I, I think it, it actually surpassed my expectations, because to be honest with you, since it was a Kickstarter, and it was one of the first Kickstarters mm -hmm. I ever backed, I didn't really have that much high expectations for it. Okay. But when I played it, yeah, it, it's it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. So... I think it's priced accordingly at 40 Yeah, oh yeah, 40 bucks. It's, yeah, it's not a $60 game, in my opinion. Like, oh, it's, of course not, yeah. I mean, it's, when you play it, guys, it doesn't play like a AAA title. Oh, not yeah. in my opinion. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm not shitting on it. All the Koji fans are like, no, you're an asshole, Jimbo. Guys, it's not a bad game. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, it doesn't have the polish and refinement of a AAA game. But at the same time, that makes perfect sense that it doesn't because those games cost like $100 million to make. They made this for like $5 million. Yeah. So this was definitely on a budget. And considering how little they had to work with, it's pretty awesome. Like, they, they put out a product that far exceeds the amount of money they spent on it. This was definitely something you can tell that, you know, Koji and, and his creative team were really into. This was a really big passion project. They really, really put the time into this to make it as good as it possibly could be. So, I think it's worth picking up, especially if you have Gamers Club Unlocked at Best Buy like I do. I got it for oh, 30 yeah. bucks. Yeah. So, 
I'm, I'm not dissatisfied with my purchase. Um, I would have liked to have gotten it on the Switch. I'll be honest with you, the only reason I got it on the Xbox One, higher resolution, higher frame rate. On the Xbox One X, it's running at 4K at 60 frames. Why would you want it on the Switch? I like the idea of a Nintendo, of a Castlevania game on a Nintendo console. Uh, so what's wrong with the Switch one? It's running at a lower resolution to get the frame rate out of it. It's running at, I think, 720. But I think I think they were able to get 60 frames because they they lowered the resolution. So I, I know I know it's real shitty, but are, is there a way to fix it? Are they are they fixing it, or is it just going to stay it's shitty? Limitations of the hardware. I mean, I'm sure it plays fine. You know, I'm I'm not. It's just when you have. I know I'm going to sound like a total fucking snob here, but dude, when you got an Xbox One X and you got like a 70 inch 4K TV, you want everything to be in native 4K. Like everything. It's like when you first got your high definition television, uh -huh. you didn't want to go back to standard res. So that being said, given that the games were the same price, I was like, it's kind of dumb for me to get like the inferior version of the game, at least in my opinion, as far as visuals. But guys, if I can catch it on sale, if it's like 15 or 19 bucks for the Switch, will I pick it up? Of course. Yes. I'd be happy to do that. I can play it on the go. That's totally cool, but yeah. my go-to for you know high-end AAA games, even though this isn't technically one, you know, anything that's in 4K, I'm gonna play it on the Xbox. It's just that simple. So, but cool. I think check it out. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. More disc-based stuff. Okay, so uh, these next three games I'm gonna show you are all PlayStation games: PS1, PS2, and the PS4. Nice. Uh, first one is Galarians. For the PlayStation One, is a three-disc game, and it plays. It, Three discs. It plays like Resident Evil. It's really? Like, it has tank controls. You're basically a kid that wakes up in like a facility. You don't know what the hell's going on, but you have hmm. you have like these powers. Like you inject yourself in the neck with like some some like I don't know virus, some type of medicine or some shit. Basically, you're just trying to. You hear voices in your head of this girl and you're trying to figure out who this is mm -hmm. and you find out it's kind of like your sister or something, you find out your parents are dead. It's weird. I haven't beaten it yet. I'm on the third disc with my friend, but the game is it's kind of hard, man, and it's just the tank controls are atrocious yeah. and you got to fight certain bosses and it's hard, man, but it's all right. It's like a $30 game. Okay. Um, and it's you know not really heard much of like I think there, I've never heard of there's it. actually a sequel on the PlayStation 2 but only in Japan. Crave Entertainment, huh? Yeah. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, I forgot what else Crave. Crave had made, they've made a couple of games back yeah. in the day. So, yeah, I, I, actually I bought this because one of my, the friends that I play games with, mm -hmm. he wanted me to play it. He wanted me to buy it so he could play it because he, he remembers this game back in the day. He always wanted to play it. So we, we, we played it together and we're about to beat it. So Nice. Very cool. Uh, the next game is, I have not played this, but since I'm a big fan of Contra, I got Neo Contra. This was the last Dark Contra Wars. game. Yeah, the last Contra game I want, I needed to get. I have a, what, what was the one, the other one? It's a PS2. Shadow Soldier. Yeah, got that one. Um, and then I got the PS1 joints. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted this one. I remember seeing this at Blockbuster. And I thought mm. the art was really cool. It looked like a comic book and shit. And it was like a it samurai. Does. and it looks like some fucking wildcat yeah, shit. Yeah. Where some, everybody has utility belts. Yeah. So, so this... This game's not expensive. No, it's not. It still has like that, you know, what do you call that? The little sticker. Label stick. sticker, yeah. whatever you call it. So, again, this is one of the games I just needed to get off the list, man, because I've been, I've been fucking wanting to get this for a while. Apparently, it's from the guy who created Shatter Soldier. It says on the back. From the creators of Shatter Soldier. Oh, I actually like Shatter Soldier. Shatter Soldier is, is good. It's, it's hard as shit, though. 3D, you know, that, that part's kind of neat. Right? The game is hard as oh, no, wait, I'm sorry, that's Legacy of War, excuse me. But no, Shatter Soldier, I actually do like. Shatter Soldier, it's, it's 2D, but it's still 3D. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, well, it's 2.5D, like, I guess, yeah. like whatever you call it. Plus, Shatter Soldier's got fucking rocking soundtrack, yeah, dude, so it does. that's a good one. The game is hard as balls. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> and so, the last PlayStation pickup. And a ginormous box. It is the King of Fighters 97 nice. limited run uh, collector's edition. It comes in this mock Neo Geo box. Um, Giant it is card. The PS4 version. They nice. came out. It also came out for the Vita. Nice. But I don't. I don't collect for the Vita. But it comes with a whole bunch of stuff, man. It comes with a manual. It comes with these like cards, the game, of course, and a big ass poster. I personally think so far this is Limited Run's best collector's edition. Cause That's definitely neat. Their collector's editions are kind of janky, I'll be honest with you. But this one was, I thought this one was probably the coolest. This one is a janky. Yeah, th see, but that, this one came before this one. Okay. That one, so. Okay. So yeah, this one was like the first one where they got it right, so. That's definitely cool that they took time to put in the big, you know, Neo Geo box. Yeah. And those giant cartridges I just and thought shit. it was weird, like, 97? Like, why 97? 
Like, that's one of the most popular ones. Is it? That was the first one I played. Oh, wow. That was the one that had the giant machine, had the big, like, 30 plus inch monitor where the monitor was, like, way back from the fighting sticks. Ah. Remember that? That was, yeah, 97 was the first one that I played. Okay. First three and three. So, cool. Those I like it, do. dude. SNK all the way, baby. So. so next up for me, I'm gonna take a cue from uh, the King of the Sweat Lords over here and uh, bought a box from, I think, Croatia, from this guy who just made these. I, I don't see another listing for these. I don't see anyone else making these. For Castlevania Overflow Darkness, which is a ROM hack okay. for NES, which I understand is one of the better ROM hacks. Um, it's on, I think it's Castlevania 1 or Castlevania 3, it's one of those. But um, I just thought it'd be, I don't even own the game yet to be perfectly honest guys, but I just thought it'd be neat to get the box since I only got it for like eight or nine dollars. And this is again, supposed to be one of the better ROM hacks of it where you're playing as Simon Belmont. I mean, this this thing is really, really well put together. It's put on really, look at that shine. Yeah, it's nice like glossy, cardstock, very nice glossy. and glossy. And you know, the CO and everything and the description on the back and the screenshots and everything, like it's, it's pretty damn close uh, to what Konami put out way back when, so. Now all I need to do is get the game, and maybe somebody makes a manual. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, good maybe, luck. but you know, I'd settle for just the game. I'm actually looking forward to checking that out. And then you just need to complete the sweat. <laughs> I need to be like squeezing my sweat out into the box, like, oh god, oh, it's so fucking hot. Maybe you know? Don Base, I can help you with that manual. He could definitely help me work up a sweat. I mean, he did last night. So. <laughs> Sega stack. All right, so these next uh, what is this? Five games. These are this is my little Sega pickups for the summer. <laughs> the first one is BC Racer. I remember this game. 32x man. I ride on a fucking what? Flintstones. Bike. I got this from East Starland. Um, really? Yeah. I uh, it's, it's this game. It's this what? The game store near our, our area. Mm -hmm. The um, biggest one by far. I actually don't. I don't actually spend my money there. I just trade in games like doubles and stuff, and, mm. then, I, and then I just get it the, because they're kind of expensive. I, yeah. I rather just buy online. Good selection though. But yeah, you know, when I go there, I don't really go there knowing what I'm gonna pick up. I just see what they got at the mm -hmm. time. I'll trade in all the stuff. They tell me how much I got in credit, and I just start looking through, see what I want. This nice. was one of them. So very cool. Yeah, yeah. that one. I'm uh, jealous of this one, dude. I've, I've actually been looking for this exact one. I dude, want to a box I, uh, for like a good... The box is so hard to get, Dude, man. for like two weeks, I was on the Sega CD Sweat Lord, like... You too, huh? I, just, I do that sometimes, too. It was just for like two weeks, but, the, you know, I got... So I looked up Sewer Shark, so I've had... Okay, so my original copy of Sewer Shark that I got, I got it at Funko Land back in 1998. Uh, and I still had the receipt. I think I... This receipt's probably in here. Um, but I got it for 10 cents. <laughs> okay, but it was just a disc. So for what twenty years, I've had the, just a disc, and I'm like, I was like, dude, it's either I, I toss this game out or I just get the box. So I looked it up and I found a complete this complete box copy for nine ninety nine free shipping. You suck. Where'd you find that? It's on eBay. It was, what? It was the first time I ever just I just searched it up. I just looked dude, it up. I've been looking for that for weeks, and for it's real? like it's just finding a box. It's like but that's what I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm saying. So I was looking. You got lucky, dude. There was like two hundred listings of Sewer Shark, and this was the only boxed one. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and it's like nine ninety nine, and I'm like, yo, if this is so hard to find, why Boom. why aren't people buying it? So, dude, I just instantly bought it. And then the double that I had, bastard. double the, the discless one, I, whichever disc was like... The packing disc or whatever yeah, was. Yeah, which, which, whichever one was better I kept, and then I traded into these styling, so I got this for 10 bucks, man, so... Dude, you suck. Jesus, I'm mad jealous of that one. Yeah, and then when I when I got BC Racers, I also got this one, uh, Revenge is a Vengeance, Revenge is Sweet, they aren't. <laughs> this is a fighting game for the Sega CD. Dude, this manual is fucking thick. Jesus Christ. Yeah, show them. Check it out. Dude, look at this. Oh my god, you weren't kidding, dude. That's like a book. Yeah, really. Shit. Is there that much story? Like, oh yeah, look, they even have the dog, they even have like, yeah, they got all oh, they have all the moves for all the characters. They got stories for the characters. Wow. Yeah. But that's when they did manuals. But this cover is really dope. So I remember I used to have this game players magazine back in nineteen ninety four and one of the ads was actually this game. And I never had a Sega CD back then, but I was like, oh, I always wanted to play this. And it, I heard it's actually a pretty, it's its a different type of fighting game. But Seems like it. Yeah, so I was on that Sega CD kick for that two weeks, so this was one of the top ones. Nice. And then these last two games are Sega CD games. Sega Saturn. Sega games. Saturn. Good stuff. Sweaty. Sweaty. So, first one is The Incredible Hulk. 
the Pantheon Saga. Yeah, I heard this game's not that great, but you know, I like Marvel. I like Marvel games, dude. Like, I like these. I'm a big comic book guy, and this was one of the Sega Saturn games on my list that I wanted to check off. It's one of the cheaper Sega Saturn games that I still need. It's 3D. Yeah, it's okay. 3D. It's Runner's real old. shitty. It's not that great. So I got that, and then the last one is. Again, this is one of the cheaper games I still needed. This is Bobble Bobble. It's a collection of uh, the Bobble Bobble games. Nice! So it has, I think it had like the arcade ones and then it has a uh, Rainbow... Rainbow Roads. Rainbow, yeah, yeah. It has that one. Rainbow Island, excuse there me. There you go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, I thought it was actually pretty cool that Sega Saturn had it and I've been to, I've been looking for this game for a while. I, just, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, so That's it's a collection. Man. It's a collection of the uh, Rainbow Island, yeah. Nice. So there you go. The, the, that was my... Uh, so a Sega, Sega stack, baby. Sega stack. So this next pickup I got, I am really glad that I got to this before uh, my fellow YouTuber, the gaming historian, got to it because I noticed that as soon as he or Angry Video Game Nerd puts out a video about something, whatever they're talking about, the price goes through the damn roof. Yeah. And that would be the Aladdin Deck Enhancer, new, in the box actually. There's, you can still get these. There's like, uh, these, this is hard to get. Them. Oh, there's tons of them. Like all these ones that just weren't sold. So um, you can watch the Game Historian's video on it. He actually goes into detail about how, how all this show works. But basically what it involves is them somebody basically trying to take the guesswork out of making an NES cartridge to make it cheaper. So they basically would sell you this, this Aladdin piece, which goes on the end of your cartridge, which had like the bulk of the, the game pack's resources. Mm. Then they could sell you the cartridge piece that goes to it. Which was a lot cheaper to make because it didn't, it wasn't weighed down by having to have all this like standard NES hardware shit. Mm -hmm. So you could make the game for like 19.99, oh, wow. and it would just tie in, have the extra RAM and everything like that. And yeah, you know, just definitely some shady fucking third-party crap. But um, they made quite a few games for it. Um, there's a whole list of things on here, like the Dizzy games, the Micro Machine games, which is actually a really good game. Uh, Big Nose, the Linus Spacehead, the Quattro Sports, that kind of stuff. And there's a whole the B52. Stunt Kids, MiG-29, Soviet Fighter, Dream World, Kogi, Metal Man, Big Nose exactly. the Caveman, The Ultimate Stunt Man, just all kinds of stuff. But it's um it's actually pretty pretty neat how this system works. And you know, this is definitely a dark horse in the, the NES lore. You know, where somebody just really thought outside the box and they're like, you know, how do we make these games cheaper? Hmm. And they're like, Well, you just buy this thing and then we can just put out the little cheap cartridges, which are really small actually, they're only like this big and just throw it in there and it basically, um, you can see on the back of the box there, it kind of fits into like a game genie where the cartridge actually sticks out of your NES. Yeah. So it's just like a little attachment. But um, if you can still get one of these new, I would do that. This is kind of a neat little thing to play because then you can play all of the uh, Aladdin Deck and Answer games and there's quite a few of them. Mm. So I think this was like 15 bucks. Are you serious? Yeah, this is really cheap. How much is now that what's his face made a video? $50. <laughs> like you might, it, it may, yeah, everything is in heaven and flow. It might go down. Just keep an eye on it. See if you can get one new. You know, I mean, it's you definitely would want one new if possible. So okay, yeah. I, I mean, twenty to thirty bucks, I think, is reasonable for this if it's yeah. new. You know. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Check it out. So we got a couple of accessories here. Um, these, I believe, came from Greece. There's some dude who or Spain or something like that. These dude printing these little uh, Nintendo Power uh, stickers for your NES controller. And I actually had this one. On my NES one, these there was a big sticker sheet that came in. Uh, I think two of the issues of Nintendo Power, where you had stickers for your Super Nintendo, for your Game Boy, for your NES controller, etc. I had this one, and I think I had the Purple Circuit Board one. Uh, this one, I think, might be a custom one. I don't think this was originally released, but I just thought it was neat. You know, kind of Nintendo mm -hmm. Power logo and stuff. So I'm gonna add those to my NES controllers. Then we have an incomplete Super Mario Brothers. I think these were called trophies. Mm. And where you know it's got like your name, date, your high score, and everything like that. Mario's missing oh. his fireball. Oh, and that probably one? a bad guy or anything. I have a, I have a few more in the back. Um, Super Mario ones. There's Zelda ones. There's Punch Out ones, etc. So little things like that. And then uh, on to quick Sega thing. We got some Sega accessories. These are actually sealed. Uh, funny quick story about these. There's two of these tapes. There's the two yellow ones, and there's there's an orange one. I specifically bought those, and I had those before I moved in here. I don't know what the hell happened to the tapes. Everything else in this room, as far as I know, is accounted for, but those just kind of vanished. I, you know, I don't know what happened, but these were um, Sega Game Gear tapes that were put out through the Howard Johnson Hotel. Remember those? The Howard Johnson Hotel? This the hotel and restaurant? Yeah. You probably recognize the logo. Oh. It was a hotel and a restaurant. Wow. Oh. So it was cheap. 
This is basically a motel, but gotcha. Suggest a retail price of $9.99, $9.95 rather, the official hotel for Sega video game fun. Where you got X-Men, Eco the Dolphin, Sonic, and all these kind of tips and tricks for the Sega systems. And since these were really cheap to get, uh, these were like $6 a tape new, got two of them. <laughs> so why not, right? Yeah. 12 bucks for two brand new tapes. So I think it's about that time, bro. What time? What time do you think it is? John Bay style time? That would be nice, but this is that other time. With that other. Until tomorrow. Tell it's turbo time. It's turbo time! It's turbo time! So we got a few turbo pickups here. A couple little things and one really big thing. So we'll start with the little things first. Uh, just an extra turbo controller. You can never have too many of these. Um, this one was pretty cheap. It has a slightly frayed controller cord, but that's fine. I can fix that. So, just an extra one. And we got this really sweet freaking pamphlet. That was probably at video game and toy stores where um, it just shows you what's out for the turbo, what's coming, you know, bonk, all the sports games and everything. It's got the systems on the back with the CD attachment. This is before the Turbo Duo. So you got the Turbo Express, the CD attachment, the booster, and the Booster Plus. All that good stuff. I just, I love little, little kind of encoutrements like that. They're just <laughs> kind of anything like published or paraphernalia or anything like that for the Turbo Graphics. I just absolutely have to have it. Yeah. Speaking of which, this is an original Yo Bro poster. Probably the only one I've ever seen and didn't have to break the bank to get it. Mascots of the Beach Boys. It's just this is the only turbo, well, other than the main system poster that came with it. I have one of those that I need to get framed. But um, as far as games are concerned, this is the only game poster for it that I own. They didn't really make too many of these. I think there's a Splatterhouse one. Uh, that... Maybe I'm not, okay, or maybe I'm uh, impossible. Right? Yes. There's one of those, yeah. Are you sure? Yes. I, sure. I know it came with stickers. Yes. Okay. No, there's there's a couple posters out there. It's just, okay. They aren't very easy to find. Gotcha. So I was lucky enough just to get this one. So now we get on to the sweatiest thing I've ever done, probably ever in my turbo collection. But this was when you look at all the turbo stuff that I have, it's like, why would I stop at this? Yeah. You know, this is definitely one that I just simply had to get. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a turbo duo box. This was the first one that I, by itself that I'd ever seen for sale. And unfortunately, it doesn't have the styrofoam. I wish it did. Uh, wasn't cheap to get one of these things. I did get what I felt was a pretty good deal. I negotiated a little bit with the dude. And um, it's really funny because when I sent I sent a picture of this to Miguel when I saw it. And I was just like, dude, I got to get it. He's like, how much is it? And I'm just like, well, you know, I'm offering X amount of dollars. And he's like, ah, that's not bad. And I was like, dude, I'm probably not going to get a chance to buy another <laughs> one of these. Like, it's just, this is the first one I've ever seen. I look for this shit literally every day. You know, and this is the first chance I've even had to buy one just by itself. And what happens less than a week later? Someone puts an even better one on your <laughs> after, the after you bought place. it? After I bought it, after I had it, I was like, come on. I mean, like, this box isn't terrible. Like, I definitely have way worse boxes. This it does have a couple lines, and it is an overall pretty good shape. It's definitely presentable. Um, but the one that they put up was, like, just minty. Like, no lines in the box. Everything was, like, spit polished and everything. But, you know, it's all good, man. It's I wish it had the styrofoam. I'm going to see maybe I can get it separately. You do occasionally see stuff like that. If I you know, if I can find the foam separately, yes, I'll get it to complete the box and I'll get a spare turbo duo to put in there. But I'm just glad to have this as a shelf display piece. Um, so. How much does a complete copy go for? Like, with the system and everything? Because I don't even... Oh, like a complete unboxed system? Yeah, I don't have it. Seven, eight hundred bucks? <laughs> At least... I mean, I mean, it depends on the like. If it's brand new, fifteen, sixteen hundred. Are you serious? Oh yeah. If okay, so new. what is it about the Turbo Duo that just? So you can play Turbo Graphics sixteen. You can play Turbo CD. You can play what else? The Super CD. Super CD. PC Engine games. PC. Oh, like PC Engine Japanese. CD games. Yes, it's okay. not region locked. You uh, can't play the you can't play the cue card games. You can't. Not without an adapter, but any CD game that was released for this, regardless of Do you need a region, card to play the? Cause you, nope. No card. Nope. Okay. That's the big thing. Like, the, I get asked that question a lot. People are like, you know, should I get the Turbo Duo? That's really expensive. You know, I can get the CD attachment. Okay. Yes, you can get the hardware to play the CD attachment cheaper. If you just need the dock and the actual CD player. Yeah. If you're lucky, 250 bucks maybe for the pair. If you get lucky, it might need new capacitors. It probably does. Here's the problem. The regular system card for that is only going to play like 10 games. Oh, okay. So you need the, the Super System Card 3 to play the really good shit. 
like the the Lords of Thunder type stuff. So Lords know, of Thunder, like the Super games. CD, these are exclusive to the Turbo console. Yes. Those were made for this console. I mean, you can play them on the CD attachment, but you have to have if you if you have to have the CD attachment, you have to have the Super System Three card, which is it's basically a RAM upgrade for the yeah, system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the the Super System Three card is built into this hardware. Gotcha. So, but so what, what I'm saying is the Turbo Duo. There is no game specifically for this console. This this console is like a specific, just like a compilation console. Is what yeah. I'm saying. Okay. It just it kind of takes the guesswork out of it because it's like a Sega CDX kind of. Yeah, I guess you could say that. I mean, because that played Genesis too, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually a really good comparison. Yeah, it's like it's basically just the path of least resistance. You know, it plays both games. There's no additional accessories or anything needed like that. The only thing that really irked me about it is that it has proprietary controllers. The TurboGrafx controllers will not work on this. Oh. PC Engine controllers will. But there's a really easy way to overcome that. There's like a $7 adapter cable you can buy that's Turbo Duo on one end, Turbo Graphics on the other end. Okay. So if you want to play like Dungeon Explorer 2 or something that requires a multi-tap and you don't want to have to go through the trouble of getting a Turbo Duo multi-tap, the $5 adapter cable and you can just use your regular TurboGrafx shit. Nice. So, cool. yes, very, uh, very cool. One of my favorite systems. Very happy to have this box next to my other... You can see it right above my head. The other three that I've got a box back there, including my original one. This one's gonna go on top, man. This is gonna be like the fucking crown of the Tower of Power, man. I'll be like, oh, there it is, the Turbo Duo. The system I always wanted when I was a kid, but my parents couldn't buy it for me because it was so ridiculously expensive, dude. It was over $300 when it came out, which back then was just unbelievable. Crazy. So, cool. Turbo Duo for the win. Good stuff. Ready? Okay, so. What do you got, bro? Uh, I got this real weird NES game. <laughs> that looks like a PC game. Dude, this looks like fucking trash, but it's uh it's <laughs> And he bought it anyways. <laughs> no, so what this was, okay, this is called Mystic Origins, right? So okay. this is a NES game and it was basically what what this was, I went on this website, I forgot what the forum is where all these NES collectors go to. I went on it a couple years ago and on the front page there was this Kickstarter. Th this basically was an impulse Kickstarter backer buy for me, right? It was this guy that like he grew up and he always wanted to make this game and so basically okay. part of the Kickstarter was the game and then like a video on how to make NES games or some shit. I didn't give a shit about making NES games. I just wanted the really? game, right? Yeah. Dude, I back I kicks I backed this shit like years ago and I don't I totally forgot about it. So I'd say about like maybe like two months ago, I went on the Kickstarter because every once in a while I go on Kickstarter to see all the games that I backed. Sure. Because you know there's a lot of ones I still haven't gotten from years ago, and so this was one of them. And so I looked at the comments and everybody's complaining. Everybody's like, "Where the fuck is my game at? This shit has been." I just, it got delayed. Dude, like, yeah. And so, th so this guy's like trying to explain that some stuff has gone out to us, which I haven't seen shit, you know. And then so basically, a lot of people that were like just just wanted a game already. The, basically the developer of the Kickstarter game, he said, okay, look, um, this is what we can do. We can send you Mystic Origins, which isn't the game you backed, but it's like a prequel of the game that you backed. <laughs> we can send this to you instead if you don't want to wait for the game that you backed. I, I think that's how, dude, I, he had this long explanation. I was just like, and, the and, then, and, then, and he was like, yeah, people, people who that just want a game now, you guys can go ahead and submit your request. And I was like, dude, just send this shit to me. I don't give a fuck. I don't even want the real game anymore. So the, the, <laughs> this he, is wild, Yeah, man. so he just sent this shit to me. And then I looked it up on eBay to see if I could see how much I could sell it for. I don't, even remember, I don't remember how much I paid for this shit. But there's no listings for it, so I, I wouldn't know how much I could sell this for. But wow. Let's see, let's see if you guys can see that shit. It looks like a Zelda type Yeah, that game. looks like a Zelda game. Um, but this look, Dude, look how corny this shit looks, dude. That, there you go. Yeah, that it, looks pretty bad, actually. It looks like real bad. And it doesn't even come in the NES box. It comes in this fucking, like, clamshell, like... That looks like some pal shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was... I got this, and as soon as I got it, I opened it up, and I was like, oh. And then I was like... Toss that shit. Throw it. So I just thought I'd throw. I figured I'd show this just because it's just, just a weird story about it. I, I guess I'll just keep it just to have it because I don't think too many people even have this. That is strange. That is the strangest game acquisition story ever. It's like it we're is. not going to give you the actual game, but we have this like prequel game that we didn't tell anybody about that we're just going to. Yeah, because like, like where the fuck did that come people, from? People were confused about the Kickstarter. I guess people thought something else was supposed to come. I don't know. Dude. It's, it's that is, something like that. That is strange. So there you go, Mystic Origins. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I think you win for some like weirdest pickup. I, I can't <laughs> top that. Sorry.
Okay, so this one um, is like part pickup, part I found something that I didn't know I still had kind of thing. I was cleaning out a closet recently and I found a bunch of books and I had completely forgotten that I collected the Resident Evil book series way back when. There's actually quite a few of these. They're numbered, they're all connected and everything. You know, this is the first game, The Umbrella Conspiracy, Caliban Cove, which takes place after the first game but before the second game, City of the Dead, which is obviously Resident Evil 2, so I can show you the rest of them. Underworld, which takes place after Resident Evil 2. Hmm. Nemesis, which is obviously the third game. And then we get to the pickup portion of it. There's there's two other books that I didn't have. Shout out to my buddy Shifty for letting me know because I sent him this picture. He's a huge Resident Evil fan. And I was like, dude, look what I found in my closet. And he was like, oh, nice, dude, the S.D. Perry books. I was like, you actually know what this is? He's like, of course. And he's like, dude, you're missing two books. And I was like, I am? I was like, there's more? And he's like, yeah, there's one based on Code Veronica and there's one based on Resident Evil Zero. I was like, no shit. So I was able to get the Code Veronica book. Dude, that dude looks like he's had a hard he is night. Fucked up. That dude's like, oh my yeah. god. The bitch, the divorce. She fucking really, she really fucking cleared me out. Then <laughs> Chris Redfield filled out my butthole <laughs> you know, while I was sleeping. So this is the adaptation of Code Veronica, obviously. Um, I haven't uh, been able to find a copy of the Zero book um, for a reasonable price. I'm just kind of waiting because there's plenty of listings for it. It's just I want to pay like twenty dollars for it when the the average on these books is like seven or eight dollars shipped. Yeah. So I'm trying to get one around that price, so just so I can have the complete collection. But these are actually really good books. Like I vaguely remember reading the first book, and they had actually an, a really neat way of explaining why they were going through all the trouble of um, finding keys to open doors when they have guns and you can just shoot the motherfucker. Oh, open. really? Yeah, I remember there's a specific scene, I, I forget whether <laughs> it's Chris or Jill, again, this is the this is in the first book, where there's a door where they didn't have a key and she actually shoots it open and they go into detail about how it's not like it's in the movies and like you can get debris like flying back in your face and it's actually really dangerous to do that when you're shooting at metal, so she like he or she like covers it with her hand and like kind of gets off to the side and like shoots off the lock like that. Oh. She's just like wow, and she's like she actually get, he or she actually gets hit with a little bit of debris. It's like I don't think I want to do that again. So, so it's like they gave like a logical explanation of like why they're going through all the trouble, fucking Metroidvania, and, you know, running back and get keys and shit. Oh. So they're actually really neat books. They're not they're not written for children, guys. These are definitely written for grownups. So they just. If you like the games, these kind of flesh out the story a little bit. Okay. You know, these kind of fill in the gaps in between story beats. Oh, yeah. So you can get them for not that much money. If you like Resident Evil, again, thanks, Shifty, my pal, fucking Sweat Lord Capone. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Check them out. So thanks to uh, Cartwheel at Target, I was able to get a PlayStation Classic for really cheap. It was on Cartwheel one day, I think, for like $24. And two reasons uh, that I got this. That was the first reason, is I was really cheap. That's the receipt hanging out of it. And the other reason is my excellent pal and co-host of Dirt Flicks, Mark the Game Shark, has actually figured out how to mod these, and he can basically put the entire PlayStation library on this. So there isn't really a lot of games on this one that I really give a shit about. Like and when it comes out of the box, I mean there are a couple. You know, Twisted Metal is kind of cool. Um, the original Destruction Derby. I don't know why people shit on that. I love Destruction Derby. <laughs> it's fun. Um, Let's see, Odd World, uh, First Metal Gear Solid. Jumping Flash is dope. Have you played Jumping Flash? Jumping Flash is good. Um, Resident Evil Director's Cut, that's a good one. Uh, Wild Arms, that's actually a really good Wild RPG. Arms. Tekken 3, that was the first Super Tekken game I really Fighter got into. Good. Uh, Battle Rangers of Shinden, very that's underrated game. I like that one. Um, the original GTA. So, yeah, Final Fantasy VII, of course. That's the big one. That's probably the reason Mr. Almost Trevor, why the fuck we put that I don't know. There. Revelations Persona, yeah. Rainbow Six. I don't know where Rainbow Six came from. It just seems like they were just like, but is there Ridge? Oh yeah, there is Ridge Racer. I was about to say, like, oh yeah, guys, almost forgot. Ridge Racer, the fucking worst announcement ever. Intelligent Cube. I don't want. I don't know. Like, it's if you're gonna get one of these guys, get it modded. Like, I mean, just unlock the whole thing. There's so much better games than the ones that Sony picked on this. This is like, <laughs> this is the classic that was basically dead on arrival. Like, the NES classic. Killed it. So, Super how NES much classic. is it now? It's forty. It's. I think it's normally forty dollars. How much was it when it first came out? A hundred. It was like eighty. <laughs> I think when it came Whatever, out. Whatever, dude. I was like, that's I garbage. never bought it. So if you, you know, I got it on Carwell. I got lucky. It was for like three days for twenty-five bucks at Target. Keep an eye out. See if you can get it on sale. I've seen it close to the twenty-five dollar mark before, like hanging around twenty-nine ninety-nine. If you can get it and you can get someone to mod it, I think it's worth it, because there's a ton of great PlayStation games. It's just. They didn't really include many on this, but I mean, think about it. NES Classic killed it, Super NES Classic killed it, Sega Genesis Classic is definitely going to kill it. 
I've already got mine pre-ordered for September. Mm. Their lineup is fucking awesome. Turbo Graphics Mini, you know, just announced that's gonna crush it. So this is kind of the only one that just did badly, you know. Which I laughed my ass off at personally. I was like, nope. That's what they get for not including a power cable. I know that's nitpicking, but there's no power cable in here. Wait, so how do you play it? It runs on USB. Uh -huh. So you have to have a little USB wall charger. You have to supply your own. Oh, wow. It's like a 59 cent piece, and they couldn't include it. Like, my buddy Willie, shout out to Arcade USA, was just like, well, everyone has one of those. I was like, yeah, but Nintendo included it. Because it's like a 59 cent piece. If everyone has it, that's beside the point. If it's only costing them like half a dollar to put it in, then fucking put it in there. Like, why should I have to cannibalize something else in my house because you're so fucking lazy? That's so stupid. That is. Like, I understand that's nitpicking. Do I have extra ones in my house? Yes. That's not the point. Is that this thing should be playable without me having to do anything. Because that's just the way things work. That's like, here's this car for you, but um, you're going to need to like supply your own valve stems. That's dumb. All right? It's like, don't do that shit. <laughs> That's my sweat lower brand, all right? So fuck this system unless it's cheap is basically what I'm saying. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Piece of shit. Fuck that shit. So... The sweatiest of sweat lord pickups, okay, I think. Guys, we saved the best for last. This is by far the most sweatiest. And I will explain why. This Even I know what this is. And I'm not a second guy. Sweat. This is okay. pure sweat. So this uh, this was the second... Okay, I need one more game to complete the Sega Master System. Which is not easy to complete. It's not. Okay, That's so a lot. this is basically the second to last game that I got. And okay. it is Sonic the Hedgehog. The North American version, and how you can tell? The PC code. This fucking dirty ass fucking PC new PC sticker. So basically, this sticker is worth more than a lot of people's collections. This is kind of just sad. having the sticker. Yeah, dude. That's that's sweet. really the only way you can tell that this is a North American copy. Because if you just have the cart, you won't know, dude. So you basically it's the case. It's the sticker, dude. Didn't you have another copy on a previous episode? Yeah, uh, so, okay. Tell me about Remote Refresh Mode. There's, uh, there's three other games with stickers. There's Strider, okay. there is Golden Axe Warrior. That's and, it. That's yeah. what I mean. Okay. And then there's Spider-Man. So these four games, those four games, all have UPC stickers. Okay. Well, basically, these are all, like, I guess they were all PAL games. And so what happened was they took PAL copies of these games, shipped them to the U.S., and just slapped a sticker on them. So these, so, so if you look at the, if you look at these four games manuals, yeah. they're like French or I don't know, they have some weird ass language or some shit. So that's why it's so sweaty because a lot of people, okay, so uh, people are divided. Like collectors are like they don't know whether this is actually, you know, is, like is it a legit U.S. copy? No, well it's like is it like part of the actual set? Like will, yeah. will people actually consider? Just having this part of the set, like like if you have the rest of the games, but you don't have this game with the sticker, with the do, sticker, do you still have a complete set? Me, I don't give a fuck. I got the sticker. I can say I got the set. I don't want to. I don't want to be like <laughs> debating whether it is or not. I don't give a fuck. I'm sweaty. I got it. You are. So now, all the only game I need now is just the uh, the Buster Douglas boxing game, That's which the is, one. which is yeah, which is like. Actually, I'm probably gonna be paying more than I pay for this one. I actually found this one for a good deal. Do we? Do you want to tell everyone how much it was? Oh, you don't. You don't have to. Nah. Like a lot, a lot. Yeah. Like north I'm, of a hundred bucks, obviously. Yeah, it's it was definitely more than a hundred bucks. Okay. Definitely. You can leave it at that. So, and I got it in this nice like, little protective case, even though. Oh, I fucking hope so. Yeah. So, but yeah, there you go, guys. That's uh the sweatiest pickup. Sonic Sweat Lord Edition. Sonic Sweat Lord Edition. There you go, guys. So my final pickup, ladies and gentlemen, this is not an empty box. This is actually very heavy because there's a lot of stuff in it. The NES sports set to kind of go with um, the rest of my, uh, I kind of collect um, complete in box NES consoles and the, basically the main one, yeah, no, it's a little crispy. On that side, <laughs> kind of, but I got a really good deal on it, so it's all good. But the main one I don't have now that I have this one is the Rob the Robot set, which is by far the most expensive one that's yeah. two or three times what any of the rest of them go for so this i think is probably about the i'd say the second most unusual one mm -hmm. like if you can get it complete the sports set didn't really sell all that well okay so as you can see on the front it comes with the nes it comes with four controllers and it comes with a satellite and 
it comes with a double card game, Super Spike V-Ball and World Cup. So you basically you've got like four player multi-tap readiness, like ready to go, like right out of the box. So there's one small problem with this. So I did get a really good price on it. It does have the foam. It does have basically everything in there. Uh, I was missing two things. It didn't have the satellite and it didn't have the game. So I had to fix that. Funny story, as you saw earlier in the video, Miguel got a copy of Super Spike V Ball <laughs> World Cup from me, and then I was like, "Fuck! Why did I let him get that one?" So I, I thought it was a double it. that you had. No. Oh, you just. Well, I mean, it. well, I mean, I do. It is technically a double because I have it on the shelf. Oh, okay. So that was an extra, but I, you know, that was before I bought this. Then I was uh, just like, "God damn it!" Like I, I, because I bought this thing. I'm like, "Well, I've already got the game." Then I looked on the shelf. I was like, "Fuck! I let him have it. Oh, damn it!" So, but it's okay. So I was able to complete it because. I got a spare copy of the game, Super Spike Evil. This is that's not an expensive game. This is sub ten dollars. Yeah. So it's all good. And then I need the satellite, so that's when things get interesting. So while I needed the satellite, and that's really all I was after, I already have a box satellite in the back, but I needed one to go in this particular set. So I found an auction that had the satellite, which you see here, and it's not all cancered up and yellow like a lot of these <laughs> things are. You know, this up. one's nice, Nintendo gray. <laughs> um, came with the sensor, which is good. And it came with a spare sensor, which I think is even better because a lot of times these things can go bad. So I got a backup sensor. Oh, wow. And it came with four games. Oh, what? And I got the whole thing for like $9 with shipping. So as far as I'm concerned, like the games were just a bonus. Yeah, dude, I got fucking mad sweaty with this one. So another copy of Super Spike <laughs> Again, three I, times. Three times. Three times the same Dog, game. That was not set that. up. That no, just happened. He didn't notice this until I did this a lot. So if I... <laughs> I bought this first, obviously, and then I bought the satellite, because then I was just like, well, god damn it, why did I buy the game? I could have gotten it for free. So, it's hey, it's all good, man. We got Super Spike V-Ball, which is a four-player game, so that makes sense that would be included. Kings of the Beach, another four-player game, so that makes sense. TNC Surf Designs, which we got a funny story, we'll tell you about that in just a second. That's a good one. And Track and Field 2 from Konami. So, as far as I'm concerned, man, all of, ooh. Cash converters. Oh, that's a store. Sorry, interesting label. Cash converters, ninety nine cents. Oh, that's good. Cool. I don't know what that is. So, funny story for you guys. Um, I think I've mentioned this on Facebook, but I don't think we've ever told this on camera. This game <laughs> is how this motherfucker and myself met, and we didn't even know it. Yeah, we didn't until know it until years later. <laughs> like I didn't know it until I went back and reviewed the footage because there's. I have a video up. It was the first NES tournament that I ever competed in. It was uh, Balloon Fight, TNC Surf Designs, and Burger Time, I think is what they were doing. Um, I did pretty well. I actually placed in all three events. I was, I think I was the only guy there who actually ranked in all three games. I only played TNC. Yeah, like, yeah. and we'll, we'll tell you why in a second. So I had never played Burger Time before. I knew I wasn't going to do good at <laughs> TNC because like, even if I did okay at the skating, fuck the surfing. So yeah, I was like, whatever, I'm just give it a shot. I did pretty good at Balloon Fight. I'm pretty good at that game. So, then it turns out, I was talking to him about this, and we were talking about East Starlands. Yeah, we were at, like, what, Krispy Kreme? Yeah, we were at Krispy Kreme. We were talking about it. I was just like, oh, yeah, man, I played TNC Surf Design. Yeah, and he was like, I played in a tournament. I was just like, wait a minute. I was like, did you win? He's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty good at the surfing thing. I was like, dude, I was at that tournament. I was like, I remember. I was like, yeah, so there was one motherfucker who just, like, was totally sweating the surf thing. He was just sitting there going around and around and around, just racking up the score, and we're all like, dude, I okay, you won, dude. I literally <laughs> obliterated everybody that Yes, I did. yes. I w we we're all just like, okay, that guy won TNC surf, because he's just going and going. We're like, dude, you won. It's okay. You can kill yourself now. It's all good. <laughs> so, yeah, it turns out we met, like, two years earlier. And the prizes were so fucking lame, dude. Oh, like you, yeah. What, you got the, what, the boogie board? I got a boogie board. So I, so I have an Instagram, right? It's, it's really the only social media I use now. So, yeah. And then one of the, I think one of the very first posts, probably like the second post was me uh, accepting the boogie board. Like my friend recorded me like going up and getting the boogie board. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what I did with it. Dude. I had it in my room for a while. I was like, I don't need this shit. It's stupid. It. It's like totally unrelated to the game. Yeah. Like you're not even boogie boarding in the game. That's a stupid gift. Yeah. But I'll tell you what was even lame than your gift was my gift what was your because gift? I came in third. I think I got the poster of Chewbacca. Oh God! I think I didn't get that. Board. I think I, I, I think I still have that somewhere. Who, who got? Okay, who got second? I don't remember, but okay. it was better than my gift. Yeah, that was lame. And like the balloon fight thing that one, I came in second. It was like this stupid balloon kit for making balloon animals. I was like, this is lame. You actually so I remember when when you told me that like you you 
you uh, you like, yo, was that really you? And then you sent me the video of you talking about me, not knowing that it was me. Yeah, that's the funniest part. It's like way back when I was like, yeah, there's this one guy who's so good at saying something. You can tell it's like the way you just fuck this me, motherfucker. Yeah, the way you describe it, I was laughing so hard when you sent me that video because yeah. you're talking about me. And because uh, like, this was before we started talking, like yeah, I didn't know it was System Psycho. I just thought it was like some random dude. You didn't even know I lived in the area. No, no, this was long before we actually yeah. started talking. I'm like. Yeah, it's like, yeah, so there's this one guy, you know, and this one guy gets on the surf, man, it's basically over, this guy's obviously the fucking ringer, and I'm, you yeah. can tell by the sound of my voice, I'm like, fuck this guy, man, I'm like, <laughs> you're, you're like amazing, you're like, who the fuck is this <laughs> like, I've never seen anyone play this good this at this fucking game. Fucking midget ass Hispanic. Fucking everyone <laughs> had trouble with the surfing level when I was a kid, like, everyone could do okay at skating, but everyone was like, dude, fuck surfing, because yeah. it was so difficult, alright, so what, give us quickly, like, what is the trick, what is the technique to be good at surfing? Uh, like what, so what is that? Dude, the thing is, it hurts my thumbs, but basically you have to, you kind of have to go all the way down, right? And then you kind of let yourself go up. But what happens is the way to get points is you got to keep circling at the top of the wave. So you go, bring, 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 you get all these points. Are you just going in a circle on the D-pad? Kind of, yeah. But then you, you always kind of, kind of always have to go f press forward. Okay. I don't know. It's like, honestly, I trained myself to, be, the night before, I really trained myself hard and I figured it out and like. 20 minutes. Jesus. And, I, and then the next day I just went, I just, brunt, brunt, I just, I'm actually better at the, I'm actually better at the surfing than I am at the skating, the skating. Really? Yeah. I always mess up at the skating. That's, that's really, yeah, I was preparing the night before playing balloon fight and I was just playing the regular game and then we find out that's not what we're doing. You're doing balloon trip the entire time where you're like solo and you're having to board ops, <laughs> uh, which I practiced like none of. And if you go back and you watch the video, guys, I was this close to coming into first place. I made one tiny mistake. I never hit anything. I avoided all the lightning thing. I got a little bit too low and the fish grabbed me. Yeah. I didn't even realize. I was so focused on avoiding the fucking lightning bolt things because there was so much shit on the screen. The fish thing didn't even enter my mind. Like I was just so dialed in and I was like, and you could hear the crowd behind me go like, oh, because like I was right behind the first place guy. I needed two more seconds and I would have exceeded his points. And I was the last guy to play, so that would have been it. You know, I was like, God damn it, but well, now you know the, the story of how Retro Game Lounge and System Psycho like that be, became funny. a shared universe. Yeah, no that, that was when it began. That's the origin story. <laughs> so, that's that. So that about wraps up part two of this beginning of summer special Sweat Lordy John Bastow edition of the Hall. Extra special thanks to System Psycho as always for coming and hanging out with me on the Hall. Yeah, bringing dude. the pickups, bring the sweat. I appreciate the invite. Are you kidding me? All day. Who else would I ask? No one else is gonna bring like the freaking crazy shit. The sweatiest stuff. Yeah. Like I think our pickups like kind of perfectly complementing each other because we're kind of coming in from different angles. Like you have like an ultra rare like Master System game and I got like an NES sports set. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, just like we're both kind of doing the same thing. We're just kind of playing on different fields. Yeah. You know, so to speak. But that's hey, that's the kind of variety that you can expect during a retro game. We all, we all, when we like, every collector, I think we all have like a different vision for our collection. Of so course. We all have different goals, but we're all like, there, doing we're all we're all generally doing the same thing. Yep. But thank you again, everyone, so much for watching. If you haven't checked out part one, it's in the description box. If you like this video, mash that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're going to be doing way more of this. We're going to do an end of summer haul. Please stay tuned, and we will see you next time. Peace out, John Basta.